Vault is Diab. Oh, and he sticks a landing. The vaccination card going viral. A gymnast used his moment of glory to prove he's vaccinated. In this week's top five, welcome to know this. Let's count down and get to the biggest stories you need to know. Starting at number five, a college gymnast picks the perfect moment to remind everyone to get vaccinated. Same vault as Diab. Oh, and he sticks a landing. After nailing that vault landing with all eyes on him, Evan Manavong took out a card from his chest and proudly held it up for the crowd. It was his COVID-19 vaccination card, and the University of Illinois gymnast wanted everyone to see it before celebrating with his teammates. There was some confusion about it at first, but he cleared that up with this tweet. It's my vaccination card. Go get vaccinated, everyone. At number four, a crushing blow to LGBTQ plus Americans in Arkansas, now the first state to ban certain medical treatments for trans youth. Last month, the state legislature passed a measure that prohibits doctors from prescribing hormone treatment and conducting gender-affirming procedures at the risk of losing their medical licenses. Then this week, the bill made it to Republican Governor Asa Hutchinson's desk, despite previously signing two anti-LGBTQ plus bills, he vetoed this one, calling it an extreme government overreach. The state should not presume to jump into the middle of every medical, human, and ethical issue. This would be and is a vast government overreach. But the Republican-controlled state legislature overrode that veto, making it state law. Arkansas attorney and advocate Chris Attic has a transgender son. He testified against the proposed bill as it made its way through the legislature. He told now this what this will do to trans youth in his state. What this has is a chilling effect that precludes the ability of doctors to refer kids uh, or youth or, or frankly even adults um, to gender affirming and informed trans health care. Attic tells now this it all amounts to nothing but pure hatred. It seems to be punishing a class of individuals for their identity. But advocates say the fight isn't over. The ACLU tweeted Tuesday that they are preparing lawsuits against this ban. Number three, Major League Baseball moves its all-star game from Georgia after the state passes a law that critics say limits voting rights. The MLB will now hold its big game in Denver instead of Atlanta after Governor Kemp signed a bill that restricts voting in the state. The MLB is just one organization that condemned the restrictive measures. Large corporations such as Delta and Coca-Cola also came forward to denounce the controversial bill. These moves came after an open letter was signed by more than 70 black executives urging corporate leaders to use their weight to change policy. That effort was led by former American Express CEO Ken Shenault, who said that while they wanted to apply pressure, they didn't necessarily agree with the MLB decision. I think it's unfortunate, but I can understand the Major League Baseball's move, but we certainly wish it did not have to happen. But what we need to focus on in America is the fundamental right to vote. We cannot compromise on that right. Here's what's at the center of this bill. It increases voter ID requirements and shortens the amount of time allotted to request and return mail-in ballots. Passing out food and drinks to people waiting in line to vote is now banned under the new law. Critics of the law say it targets communities of color and limits voting rights. And some feel it retaliates against the communities that helped Biden win the state. Republicans supporting the legislation point to the expansion of early voting in most parts of Georgia and provisions to help speed up results being reported. On Wednesday, three voting groups that work to expand voting rights filed a federal lawsuit against Georgia's election chief. At number two, President Biden jumpstarts the race to vaccinate by speeding up the eligibility timeline. By no later than April 19th, in every part of this country, every adult over the age of 18, 18 or older, will be eligible to be vaccinated. No more confusing rules. No more confusing restrictions. That's two weeks sooner than the original May 1st goal, attributed to the large wave of vaccine supply and more people willing to get the shots. The abundance of vaccine doses has also moved up the timeline for California's reopening. Governor Gavin Newsom announced this week that the Golden State can fully reopen on June 15th if COVID cases continue to fall. The stipulations that they have enough vaccines for everyone 16 and up and that hospitalizations remain low. The mask mandate in California will remain in place as part of the new normal for the foreseeable future. That decision by the governor came amid political pressure as he is facing a recall vote. Newsom has largely dismissed such a vote as partisan brought on by Republicans and says that he's focused on the vaccine rollout. But high profile California Californians are preparing to take his spot, including Caitlyn Jenner. Axios reported this week that she's talking with political strategists 
for a potential gubernatorial run. And a number one law enforcement officials testify against Derek Chauvin in week two of his murder trial, an unprecedented show of the blue wall of silence crumbling. Chauvin is the former officer who is on trial for the murder of George Floyd last year. And legal experts say this case is unique for the number of law enforcement officials testifying against one of their own. Madaria Arredondo, the city's first black police chief, flat out said Chauvin violated department policy. It's not part of our training and it is certainly not part of our ethics or our values. Prosecutors also called Minneapolis Lieutenant Johnny Mercil, who trained officers like Chauvin on use of force. He said that he teaches officers that the use of force must be proportional to the resistance. Well, you want to use the, the least amount of force necessary to, to meet your objectives, to control. And if those lower uses of force do not work, um, would not work or too unsafe to try, then you can increase your level of force against that person. Then prosecutors brought in an expert from outside of Minneapolis. Sergeant Jody Steiger from the LAPD is a use of force expert who said he has trained thousands of people. This was the conclusion he gave the court after reviewing the video of Floyd's last moments. What is your opinion as to the degree of force used by the defendant on Mr. Floyd on the date in question? Uh, my opinion was that the force was excessive. But Chauvin's defense argues the officers were distracted from their care of Floyd by the angry crowd. They've also tried to paint the picture that it wasn't force, but rather drugs and an underlying health condition that killed Floyd. The trial is expected to last two more weeks. That's this week's top five. What was the biggest story for you? Tell me in the comments below and be sure to follow our page for more news. We'll see you right back here next time for more news you need to know.